Testimony Treasures, Volume 2, Chapter 15, Times to Try Men's Souls. Times that will try men's souls are just before us, and those who are weak in the faith will not stand the test of those days of peril. The great truths of Revelation are to be carefully studied, for we shall all want an intelligent knowledge of the Word of God. By Bible study and daily communion with Jesus, we shall gain clear, well-defined views of individual responsibility and strength to stand in the day of trial and temptation. He whose life is united to Christ by hidden links will be kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. More thought should be given to the things of God and less to temporal matters. The world-loving professor, if he will exercise his mind in that direction, may become as familiar with the Word of God as he now is with worldly business. Search the Scriptures, said Christ, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The Christian is required to be diligent in searching the Scriptures, to read over and over again the truths of God's Word. Willful ignorance on this subject endangers the Christian life and character. It blinds the understanding and corrupts the noblest powers. It is this that brings confusion into our lives. Our people need to understand the oracles of God. They need to have a systematic knowledge of the principles of revealed truth, which will fit them for what is coming upon the earth and prevent them from being carried about by every wind of doctrine. Great changes are soon to take place in the world, and everyone will need an experimental knowledge of the things of God. It is the work of Satan to dishearten the people of God and to unsettle their faith. He tries in every way to insinuate doubts and questionings in regard to the position, the faith, the plans of the men upon whom God has laid the burden of a special work and who are zealously doing that work. Although he may be baffled again and again, yet he renews his attacks, working through those who profess to be humble and God-fearing and who are apparently interested in or believers of present truth. The advocates of truth expect fierce and cruel opposition from their open enemies but this is far less dangerous than the secret doubts expressed by those who feel at liberty to question and find fault with what God's servants are doing. These may appear to be humble men, but they are self-deceived and they deceive others. In their hearts are envy and evil surmisings. They unsettle the faith of the people in those in whom they should have confidence, those whom God has chosen to do His work. And when they are reproved for their course, they take it as personal abuse. While professing to be doing God's work, they are in reality aiding the enemy. There is nothing more needed in the work than the practical results of communion with God. We should show by our daily lives that we have peace and rest in God. His peace in the heart will shine forth in the countenance. It will give to the voice a persuasive power. Communion with God will impart a moral elevation to the character and to the entire course of action. Men will take knowledge of us, as of the first disciples, that we have been with Jesus. This will impart to the minister's labors a power even greater than that which comes from the influence of his preaching. Of this power he must not allow himself to be deprived. Communion with God through prayer and the study of His Word must not be neglected, for here is the source of His strength. No work for the Church should take precedence of this.